And we're back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be talking about graphing systems of equations. It's our third day, and we are so ready. Okay, here is our first example. Our two equations in our system are y equals 2 thirds x minus 2 and 2x plus 2y equals 6. Now, in my first equation, I can see that I'm already in slope-intercept form, so I'm simply going to identify b, which is negative 2, and m, which is 2 thirds, 2 over 3. Now, my second equation is not in slope-intercept form, so I'm going to have to do some inverse operations to solve for y. My first job is going to be to subtract 2x. I'm going to do that on both sides. And that is going to cancel out my 2x's. 2x minus 2x is 0. I will then rewrite what I have left over. 2y equals negative 2x plus 6. Okay, since y is still not isolated, I need to do another inverse operation. 2 hanging out next to y means multiply, so my inverse operation will be divide by 2. But that means on the other side, every term will also need to be divided by 2. Okay, on the left, my 2's are going to cancel each other out, and that will leave me with just 1y. Negative 2x divided by 2 will give me negative 1x, and 6 divided by 2 gives me 3. That means for my second equation, b, my, my uh, y-intercept point, is 3 and my slope is negative 1, which I'll write as a fraction, negative 1 over 1. That helps me out with the rise over run. Hey, that rhymed. Okay, I'm going to graph my first line with the black pen. And remember that our starting point will be at negative 2 on the y-axis. From there, I will rise 2 and run 3. So that's up 2, right 3, up 2, right 3 to create more points. I'm going to graph my second equation in blue, and my starting point will be at positive 3 on the y-axis, but that slope is negative 1 over 1, so down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1. Okay, now that my lines are graphed, remember we are looking for the point of intersection, and I can see that the blue line and the black line intersect or cross one another at the point 3, 0. Remember, we're going to write our solution as an ordered pair, a num uh, two numbers separated by a comma and surrounded by parentheses. Okay, remember, we should be able to check our solution, and, it ha and if it's correct, it will work in both of our equations in our system. So our solution was 3, 0. So that means our x value is 3 and our y value is 0. We're going to substitute those values into the equation. y is 0 is equal to 2 thirds times x. My x value is 3, but since I'm multiplying it by 2 thirds, I'm going to write that as times 3 over 1 minus 2. Okay. When I'm multiplying my fractions, I like to cross cancel, and since this fraction has a denominator of 3 here and a numerator of 3 here. Those both can be divided by 3. And when I multiply, I will get 0 is equal to 2 minus 2. 0 is equal to 0, and that equation checks out. My second equation, again, I'll substitute 3 in for x and 0 in for y. So I'm going to have 2 times my x value plus 2 times my y value, and we're going to hope that equals 6. 2 times 3 does give me 6. 2 times 0 is 0, and 6 plus 0 equals 6. 6 equals 6 also checks out, so we know that our ordered pair does work. Okay, here is our second example that you should be writing in your notes. Our system will be the two equations x plus y equals 7 and 3x minus y equals 1. I'm going to start with the blue equation first, x plus y equals 7. 
I am not in slope intercept form. So I need to do some inverse operations to get ourselves there. I'm going to subtract x on both sides. And that means our x's will cancel each other out. That's going to leave me with y equals negative x, or negative 1x if you prefer, plus 7. That means b is 7, my y-intercept point is positive 7, and my slope is negative 1 over 1. If I go to uh, graph that on my coordinate plane, I'm going to go to positive 7 on the y-axis, and from that positive 7 point, I will be going down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1, to create more points using our slope. Okay, our second equation, 3x minus y equals 1, is also not in slope-intercept form. So, our first inverse operation is going to be to subtract 3x. Don't make that mistake of adding 3x. That minus sign is really a negative that's attached to the y. So, to get rid of a positive 3x, we are going to subtract 3x on both sides. That's going to cancel out my 3x's, and I'm left with negative y, or negative 1y, if you prefer, is equal to negative 3x plus 1. Now, that negative that's hanging out there with the y really means negative 1 times y. So my y is really not isolated. I'm going to do one more inverse operation, and that's going to be divide by negative 1. On the other side, both of my terms there will have to get divided by a negative 1 as well. Okay, those negatives are going to cancel each other out here, and then that's going to leave me with y equals 3x plus negative 1, or 3x minus 1. That means b, our starting point on the y-axis, will be negative 1, and our slope will be 3, or 3 over 1, if you prefer to write it as a fraction like I do. Now I'm going to go ahead and graph those. Remember that you should be using a straight edge to graph your straight lines so you can get the most accurate point of intersection. Okay, now that my lines are graphed, I'm going to be looking for that point of intersection, and I can see that that is right over here, and I just need to write my answer as an ordered pair, and that is the point 2, comma, 5. Okay, the last thing we need to do is check if that solution 2 comma 5 works in both of our equations. So remember, that means we're going to substitute 2 in for the x and 5 in for the y and check if it works. So 2 plus 5 equals 7. 2 plus 5 is equal to 7, so I get 7 equals 7. Boom, checks out. In my second equation, 3 times my x value minus my y value hopefully will equal 1. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 5 is equal to 1. 1 equals 1. Boom. Checks out. Okay guys, you're going to hear this one more time. Here's your steps. Number 1, get both your equations in slope-intercept form. Step 2, graph both equations on the same coordinate plane. Step 3. Find the point of intersection and write it as an ordered pair. Step 4. Check if your answer works in both equations of your system. Remember, when you write your ordered pairs, you are checking to see how did you move across first. That's your x value. How did you move up or down second? That's your y value. Have a great day, guys.